With every other asset on earth, anything else you can own, houses, gold, commodities, stocks, bonds, when the price goes up, the supply increases. If I increase the price of, of any stock by a factor of 10, the company issues more stock. Of course. Bitcoin's the only thing in the world that's inelastic price. If the price of Bitcoin triples, you can't make any more. If the price goes up by a factor of a, a million, you can't make any more. In engineering, there's something called conservation of energy. And the whole point of conservation of energy is energy can either be made or destroyed. There has to be conservation of it. The mathematical metaphor, the mathematical analogy to that is proper math. 10 plus 10 equals 20. 2 plus 2 equals 4. If 10 plus 10 ever starts equaling 18, you've got a problem. <laughs> yeah. If you have a swimming pool with a leak, if I have an electric system with a short circuit, if I have a leak in my engineering system, nothing works. Nothing in the world of ocean engineering, aeronautical engineering, electrical engineering, nothing works unless you respect conservation of energy. The problem with inflation is inflation does not respect conservation of energy. I've got a leak in the system. I've designed a currency which is not conservative. So properly understood, if you said, I want a conservative money supply, a conservative money supply would be there's $10 billion in the economy and nobody prints anymore. Right. And, if you, and that's the Austrian economic sound money principle. Bitcoin is a conservative monetary system. It's the first system that respects the laws of thermodynamics and the laws of physics and the laws of math, which means it is true and pure. It has integrity. If you have integrity, if you have something which is true and pure and you have durability, then you can build a family around it, a life around it, a company around it, or civilization around it. Steel is concentrated energy in metallic form. You ever walk in a, a steel plant and yeah. you look at the energy going into steel refining? Yeah. It's concentrated energy. The history of the human race is the civilization that channels energy most effectively always wins. Steel trumps iron. Iron trumps bronze. Bronze trumps rocks. Bows and arrows trump the guy with the spear. The guy with the spear beats the guy with the knife. It's always a matter, if you have air power, you beat land power, sea power beats the, beats the army, and nuclear power trumps everybody. And, uh, and so, if I have steel, I have concentrated metallic energy, I can create a skyscraper punched up 100 stories in New York. How long will it last? 100 years. How long will a steel ship last? Longer than you will last, as long as it doesn't corrode. Wooden ships? Not so much. Wooden ships rot, right? You want to build a, a building to, and punch it up against gravity and hold it 100 years, you need concentrated energy. If you want to build a trust fund that'll last 100 years, how do you save $100,000 for 100 years and give it to your great grandkids? You put it in the US dollar, you use 99% of your economic energy. You put it in gold, gold supply doubles every 30 years. The gold bankers keep inflating the gold. Maybe you lose 90% of your economic energy. But that would be a lucky happenstance because just about every country on earth sees the gold from their citizens the last 100 years. Everybody, even the US, they take the gold. Yeah. So you want to save money for 100 years. You can't do it with the currency. You can't do it with gold. Which company is going to be around 100 years? You want to put $100,000 into real estate in Florida? Can you buy $100,000? Let's say you could. 2% tax, 4% maintenance fee, 4% of $100,000, $4,000 a year. Your money's not going to last 100 years. How do I preserve my property, which is economic energy, which is capital, which is money? How do I preserve that? I need something harder, more durable. I need a steel. I need an economic steel. Steel is concentrated metallic energy. Bitcoin is concentrated digital energy. It's energy in digital form. I eliminated the friction on energy. What's the half-life of energy? I take a megawatt of power and I sell it at 12 cents a kilowatt hour, I have about a million bucks. Okay, I'll give you a million dollars of electricity. How long can you hold it in a battery? You lose 2% a month. You can't hold it very long. You're gonna lose 24% depletion rate in a battery of electricity. How do you send a million dollars of electricity from New York to Tokyo? You can't. You can send electricity 500 miles over a power line, you'll lose 6%. Send it 10 times, you'll lose 60%. Doesn't move. Convert that energy, that electricity, into digital energy, a la Bitcoin. You upgrade it. If you were to convert a megawatt of power via Bitcoin miner into Bitcoin, you'd have about $5 million worth of Bitcoin. You can hold it forever.
you can send it to Tokyo for a nickel. You can put it in a trust fund. Bitcoin's going up 170% a year for a decade. The S&P 500 index is going up 14% a year on average for a decade. Gold, it's flat, it's not going anywhere. It's getting demonetized. It's a dead rock in a basement. It's not fast enough. You can't put gold on an iPhone. Gold's getting depleted, inflated, and manipulated away by the bankers and the miners. So, Bitcoin is simply pure economic energy. These engineers, Satoshi and all of Satoshi's compatriots, what they did is created an engineered monetary asset on an open, permissionless network that anybody could participate in. Any country, any company, any individual. You don't need a bank. You don't need to ask permission. It is the ultimate egalitarian system.